In the year 2003 AD, people have believed their whole lives that movies about elves were only made in New Zealand. It's the only place with enough mysticism. <laughs> At the height of technology in the industrial world, Stephen Grew decided to prove them wrong. This is not a fairy tale. In the 1960s, a band of FBI agents seek out and destroy a whole race of elves. This is the plot of Stephen Grew's The Unexpected Race, <coughs> which we discuss now on B. B. Movie Mania. B. Movie Mania. Thrilling. <laughs> Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Well, hello and welcome, my wonderful creatures of the night, I guess, and the ether and the fantasical world of everywhere. All you maniacs out there, thank you for tuning in to B-Movie Mania. We have a very special episode today. I am your host as always, well not as always, just I'm always on the episodes. My name is Michael Hayes, <laughs> and with me as always is the blissful Paul Brooks. I got a new paper shredder. <laughs> God damn it, Paul. Why did I pick you first to introduce? And, and the <laughs> reason, Mike, that I'm shredding paper oh. is to convey to our listeners that I would rather, rather shred paper for hours than have to watch this movie again. Woo! Why don't you shred another one of those, Paul? Coming out swinging. Wow. Uh, well, Is that like a cross, cross-cutting shredder, Paul? Okay, all right. This, I don't want to have to get into this too quick, Paul. Let's let's chill out for a moment. No, it's uh, fun. Also with me, also with me is the ecstatic Jason Holes. Yeah, I don't have a paper shredder. Uh, I got a printer. I could print something. All right. Okay. And then, oh boy. And then, <laughs> and then also with me as always is the the wonderful crazy Chris Hudson. And Hudson, before you answer anything, I have one question for you. Do you love me strongly? <laughs> well, I usually like to do a quote from the movie for my greeting. I had something else in mind, and I, I can't remember what, uh, what you're talking about, Mike, or what the next line is. So I'm just going to say that I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? What is this absolute chaos, guys? What the fuck's going on? It's Stephen Grew brings it out of us. Mm-hmm. All Stephen right. Grew makes us want to not try very hard, but yeah. um, still get the job done. Yeah. Mike, we are what I believe you would call Grubers. <laughs> I'll tell you what gets the job done. This brand new Aurora AU8. No, we're not. Okay, that got bleeped Wait, out. There, we is, couldn't. Is that, from, we can't, is that the new shredder from Night Beast Industries? It's not, not a Night Beast product. No, no. that's why this Ooh. was all bleeped out. Right? We, we can't talk about it on the show. Yeah, come on, Sorry, Paul. Paul. Hey Mike, I'll make a um, deal with you. Okay, what? I got a I got a bill here from Spectrum. Let me do this and then I'll turn it off. All right. It's really satisfying. You guys well, got to yeah. get one of these. <laughs> you you claiming you'd rather shred paper than watch this movie is says nothing. I mean, shredding paper is so lethargic, not lethargic, uh, ther therapeutic, and I can't speak. <laughs> well, you can edit this episode. Mike. Just Cathartic. say therapeutic again. Yeah, Mike, just say therapeutic right now. Yeah, but this is all left in. You know how I think this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't wait to hear Paul's quick take where he just shreds a whole, like, catalog. All right, speaking of <laughs> quick takes. I have, uh, Chris, I have a jury summons here that I'll be shredding oh, later. Oh, wow. You might want to actually <laughs> attend the summons, answer the summons. Nah. I believe that's nah. it. Right, I like let's do the quick duty. takes in a different order. Jason Halls. Okay. Now, I know, Mike, you, you've got some rules for the... I, I, 
just excuse me for a second. You've got some rules for this, right? Like, can we reference the documentary or not? Yeah, just use it as information. It's part of your information of knowing okay. this. I thought you okay. uh, you understand research, right? I do, uh, and I just okay. want to make sure because we don't want to go off on too much of a tangent. But d- let me just sum this whole thing up here. It's a quote. I don't remember who said it. I tried to ask Stephen King, and he didn't get back to me. Um, <laughs> to suffer for your art is noble. To make your family suffer for your art is bullshit. No, see, that should go in the documentary episode. <laughs> all right, all of that's you why I shut asked. the fuck up. Paul, I want no editing tips from you this entire episode. Uh, Jay, fine. Chris Hudson, what do you got? Uh, well, I had a long, drawn-out voiceover narration prepared to kind of show my love for the movie. Uh-huh. But instead, uh, hey, Paul, can you uh, can you shred some more paper for me? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Yeah, let's, that, let's that just sums get to the up. jury summons right now, shall we? Yeah. The I'm jury summons scene is my favorite. <laughs> oh. oh, it's having a hard time. Well, while it's working on that, Paul, what's your quick take? Everyone, everyone, all, all of our listeners, do yourself a favor. Instead of watching this movie, <laughs> get on oh, Twitter God. and spend an hour and 12 minutes watching legendary wrestler Rick Rude take atomic drops over <laughs> and over and over again. The handle is at Rick Rude Sells. Do it. You won't regret it. Is he, is he sponsored by Night Beast? We could work something out. All right, then that was only half bleeps. Okay. I mean, he died in 1999, but we could probably work something out. Well, okay. with Night Beast technology, of course they yeah. could. That's right. a good point. That's a good His point. His hologram. This is, a, this is an open possibility for a Night Beast product. Well, Hopefully, I believe we'll find that, out I, I think, about it. I think the Night Beast. I think the Night Beast slogan for this technology is bringing the estate to life. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know about wrestling, so that probably makes a lot of sense to all you out there. Well, it's Rick Rude's estate, no. and we're just going to bring him back to life through his estate. Well, and Night Beast Industries. Well, guys, my quick take is uh, this is a this is a real uh, whirlwind of a film, um, but I do need to inform you all that I ha- as we have watched the 2003 film, The Unexpected Race by Stephen Grew. Uh, I think we all watched the documentary called The Insufferable Grew about this filmmaker, specifically about him making the remake of the film in 2018. Which we reviewed last Thursday on B-Movie Mania. Yes, we did. Uh, We did do that. So just as a thing, I don't want things to get too crazy. So I did contact an elven uh, wizard. What? And yeah, he gave me a special wand to make sure you guys stay in line and make sure no one gets too far off track because we've got to keep this thing as tight as we can. I know it's going to be a little hard, but if it gets too crazy, I've got hey. a special I've got a special wand and it sounds a little something like this. So, you know, that's just a classic yeah, sound of a, apparently an elven wand. Well, hey, um, well, before we get too deep into this, I just want to say that in the uh, episode covering the documentary, The Insufferable Gru, I was in rare form in that episode. You were. I'll agree with that. Uh, yeah, you absolutely were. Totally agreed on that. <laughs> well, anyway, so just keep a heads up. Sometimes you will hear me use the wand if things get too out of control, and I'll have to zap us back into uh, the present day conversation, okay? See, the joke there is that we didn't... That's the, that's the humor <laughs> joke. And the joke is I edited out what Paul said, but he did talk about something. <laughs> no, but it was funny, so you you should keep. Okay, guys. So in uh, 2003, <laughs> Stephen grew a uh, Provo, Utah filmmaker who is prolific. If you count the number of <laughs> films he claims to have made. <laughs> oh God, he only has like 50 on IMDb. So you know he might be stretching the truth a bit. It's it's really hard to separate the art from the artist with this. Can I just say, just real quick, though, <laughs> buy the T-shirt. Yep. Um, that, uh, that <laughs> it's, it's, Wait it's a, a minute. Good Have sign. we empowered you by sign. making this T-shirt available? Is this a thing now? Hey, I just got to <laughs> say that maybe you have, maybe you haven't. <laughs> We just got to watch the sales. But, <laughs> Mike, I'll, just... I'll send you that bumper that I made for. All right, Mike, we're done. In 2003, Stephen grew a proto, <laughs> a Provo, Utah <laughs> 
filmmaker who has made 200 plus films if you, you know, believe what he claims to have made. Well, uh, made what I, I believe he believes, and I probably do too, is his magnum opus, The Unexpected Race. Debatable. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he might have something else in him. I mean, maybe if you're a big fan of his other films like Ruby or the Challenge Faith or Faith Challenge or whatever the fuck that one's called. <laughs> I mean, I think you're probably right, right, Mike, because it's the one he remade. Yes, he did, when given the chance, uh, did remake this film. So I feel like, yeah, this is something that feels real close to him. Which, which was my favorite part of the documentary when the producer asks him if you had, you know, Unlimited budget, what's the movie you would make? And Gru responds, I've already made it. Yeah. yeah. Good, on yeah. You. Good on you, Gru. I, I'm, I was curious as to why he picked that one. I mean, he kind of just said he thought he could do more with it in the, in a remake, but... Didn't do shit. I, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not sure what about that film made him go, oh, well, yeah, this is... I one. haven't... I haven't seen the remake, but I really hope that he expanded the the feast and the the feast scene with the elves. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so festival. it sounds like Mike, you and me are the only one. Well, you watched it, right, Mike? Yeah. So you and me are the only ones who saw the remake. So we can touch on it here and there. But Chris, yeah. they the one thing they expect it, it's the unexpected race. Add Jack Black. That's it. <laughs> it have different <laughs> actors. Uh, which I, I'd say are better than the previous ones, but nope. You think they're worse, Paul? You think that you didn't think they did as good? I think it's just such poor, like bad casting. It's nothing against the actors themselves. It's just nobody looks like they fit the role. Are you trying to say Stephen Grew does not look like an elf? <laughs> well, no, that well, that casting's great. Actually, that was the one big surprise from the remake. I know we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. But the one big surprise that I took away was that Gru was not the lead in the remake. Yeah. Well, he yeah. does. Uh, he's the lead in most of his films, it seems. Yeah. I get the pr impression that he does that a lot because he I, and he kind of talks about how he wants to be those characters and it allows him to escape. But I also think it's because he likes to make out with women. <laughs> I was going to bring that up. Yeah. I was yeah. saving it for the podcast, and you beat me to well, it. Sorry. Could, it like, very much could be, but the Hudson, to, ask, to, to, to really just put a cap on the idea that you hope he expounded upon it, uh, it's almost a shot-for-shot -shot remake. I'm just going to oh, put it boy. out there. Awesome. So we get like 15 <laughs> minutes of pointless horse riding, followed by an apple feast. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I don't and, think and he, I don't think he like went back and looked at the script or anything and polished it up. It's just it's the <laughs> same damn thing. And it's really not better, which is pretty no. stunning considering the fact that he had I'm assuming more money to to work with with the yeah. with the remake and it's just ugh. Well, yeah. the documentary he had a real cinematographer that in the trailer looks way better shot. No, oh, the cinema no, the cinematography yeah. is the one thing that's good, well better mm -hmm. in it. I mean the, the yeah. woman who... Yeah, but Paul, I mean, you, who could have done better working yeah, with he, this guy? It's not like he let her do yeah. her job. Exactly. Right. That, yeah. And that's why it's not much better, because he pro he was rushing through everything so much, he didn't really have a chance to make it look good. Yeah. You know, Gru doesn't give a shit, Paul. He just wants that shit done. He yeah. likes the idea of having made a film, not making a film. Yeah. I think yeah. it's... It, that's and that's how a, a lot of artists are. Fact. It's It's like my relationship with running. <laughs> you like having ran, but you I don't like, like having, to run. Oh yeah, I hate it. It's like a lot of like a lot of writers. A lot of writers love the idea of having written a book, but they don't like the process of writing it. And I think I think Gru falls into that category. Mm -hmm. If I had to okay, guess. guys, I'm sorry to have to bump this in here right now, but uh, I'm gonna have to use the wand. I'm sorry. I've been loving what we're saying, but I gotta. Yeah, we deserve it. Yeah. Mike, can, next time you use the wand, can you make sure it doesn't hit my balls? Well, maybe take your balls <laughs> off the goddamn table. <laughs> okay, so anyway. <laughs> Hit him in the balls. The, the plot of the 2003 Unexpected Race uh, goes a little something like this. A young woman must live with her father, who she has not seen in 15 years. While she rekindles her relationship with her father, she discovers Lithorian, an elf, lives in the forest. She finds out his people were massacred by a renegade FBI agent. She falls in love with him, but he must choose to stay or leave by the end. So, 
Rating time. Yeah, rating time. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> so that's... Yeah, well, you know, Mike, you, you said these elves live in the forest. Yeah. And it's really funny because you never see their homes. And at some no. point you see Lothorian just laying down on the ground. <laughs> that is, that so is that's true. He lives in the forest. And yeah. He's just, eh. You know, I know elves, okay? And I did not find this movie to be a, a particularly accurate portrayal of their culture. I think these elves just really hate furniture, tables, buildings with walls, any sorts of shelters, mm -hmm. anything, you know, just mm -hmm. living under the stars, under the leaves. They like the exterior, you know? Yep. It's also cheaper yep. for both it living is. and filmmaking. <laughs> it so. is. It is. <laughs> um... So, I mean, Chris, what? What is you're, the you're you're even having trouble just getting into the plot, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do just, it? You're like, do I really want to do this? I'll this tell you. Look on your Chris, face right now, Chris. What starts this film off? How do what? What is the opening scene that is so emotional and so intense that drives the spirit of this film? Well, you get a little girl walking into the living room, sitting on the couch, while her parents argue. Ah, oh, a tough scene always. I mean, her, yeah, I mean, her father doesn't have time to have another child with his wife. He, <laughs> I mean, he, he, he does ask whatever happened till death do us part, but she said they died a long time ago. Sacrifice everything. You sacrifice everything but you. You sacrifice everything but your money and your work. You don't sacrifice anything for us. No, no, no. Before we were married, we said we wanted a certain kind of lifestyle, and that's what I'm trying to build for you, for our daughter, for us. We wanted another child. You don't even have time for that. You don't even care that your daughter's sitting right there, listening to us fighting. What do you think she's thinking right now? Do you want what we have lived for? Do you want everything I've provided for you? No. I don't anymore. I don't want to be hurt anymore. I don't want us to hurt anymore. I can't take it anymore. What do you want? I want me? you out. Whatever happened till death do us part. We were dead a long time ago. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right, now. Uh, you know what I think she's, she's afraid of is that guy looks amazing. I don't care how old he is. I... Present day, 60 years in the future, that man does not age. Was well, this movie set in London? Well, it, no. no. I mean, the daughter has an accent, but the movie was not. But oh, I think oh, Hudson Christ. is saying this because it, the guy does look like Chris Hudson, so I imagine that's why you think he looks so <laughs> handsome. Well, I mean. Well, we jump to present day after the dad has gone to London. <laughs> uh, and Amber's come home from school in London, so apparently she's going to school there, I guess. Yeah, I didn't uh, understand that at all. Well, I didn't even hear London. No, yeah, it, it just, ex I guess it's supposed to explain that the actress has a accent. Yeah, what the kind hell is of, that yeah, accent? I guess. It was going in and out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's, yeah, it, uh, no, I don't know, man. <laughs> they leave, <laughs> they get in a car wreck. It is the deadliest fender bender in history. That's oh my true. God, it, it's deadly. I mean, there was probably $600 damage of car in, uh, to the car. Oh, easily. That's before you take into account the hospital bills. Well, yeah. you guys, you guys are jumping ahead here because I think maybe the most poignant part of the film is right when this car wreck happens, it fades to black, and then, oh my God, Paul, what pops up on that screen? Hospital? <laughs> no, no, no. We've been watching this film for five, seven minutes. And it's been an intense fight between parents, oh. a mother and a daughter, crash into a fatal car wreck, killing the mother and bruising the daughter into purple crayons. Yeah. And then popping up on the screen. <laughs> directed and written by Stephen Grew. <laughs> Not written and directed by Stephen Grew. Directed and written yeah. by Stephen Grew. Hey, when you, when you direct and write your own movies, you play by your own rules. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was a young boy, I'd watch a watch a funny comedy show, and sometimes they're like, "Let's throw the credits at the very beginning just to get real weird." Oh, this guy's just doing his own shit too, man. He's doing whatever you want. Pepper him throughout. A lot of Monty Python influence yeah, yep. in here. I was gonna say he's Monty Pythoning it. <laughs> With humanity swirling down the toilet bowl of the pigsty that is this planet here, Earth. It's hard to know what is or is not safe. Food, water, friends, hell, even just being outside could kill you. 
Well, here at Night Beast Farms, we want to ease your brain and at least some of these troublesome pains. With food, of course, we're a farm. We got potatoes specifically. Just go to bit.ly slash nightbeast and buy some of our potatoes. You can eat potatoes, and then you can grow some potatoes, and then eat the potatoes they done and growed. And then you become the night beast. Go to bit.ly slash nightbeast. You buy the potatoes, we send them to you, then you can eat them, grow them, eat the ones you done growed, and then the demonic curse that has plagued my family for generations will be passed on to you, finally. That's right, it's a heirloom type potato. Go to bit.ly slash nightbeast and buy our cursed potatoes. They're delicious. That sounds like a great product from Night Beast there. Uh, make sure yeah. everyone checks it out because thank you <laughs> to them for sponsoring <laughs> us. Hilarious. I got one. You did get one, Paul? You got one? Yeah, definitely. Oh, nice. Very cool. It's great. Oh, great. I hope it's making your life a better uh, thing to have. It's okay. I buy them as gifts for everyone I know. Really? Wow, that's mm-hmm. great. That's I like to, weird. I like to eat them. Okay, so mom's mom's dead in the car wreck. Uh, Amber is eating dinner with her dad. He thinks eating food makes you heal faster. Uh, well, as shown in video games, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mike, Literally you skipped does. over one of the only notes oh? I took. Oh, part. Paul, sorry then. What what was the note you took? Paul just needs to say real quick. <clears throat> yeah. I, hey, I just I I just want to say real quick that Amber <laughs> wakes up in the hospital, and her injuries from the crash look uh-huh. exactly. Like the disease that all the di- all the adults get in the classic Star Trek episode, Miri. <laughs> it's wonderful. The grumps. Paul, in that same scene, I noticed the nurse that comes in to check on her. Bones? She doesn't have to drop the bomb about her mother, but she decides to. The nurse makes a conscious decision to tell her at that point that her mom is dead. It's, al- it's almost like this was poorly written. It's... Hey... Cool. <laughs> it's poor, poorly written, Paul, or great bedside manner. You're worried about you. Where am I? You're in the hospital. What happened? You were in a car accident. You and your mother. Where is my mother? No. No. I'm sorry. She died in the accident. No! A reflection of life. Yeah. Real life, folks. Just laying it on her. This is how it is. That nurse, I'm sure, took great pleasure in telling her that her mom died. She probably went home and had wild sex with her husband about <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Wow. So, so she has dinner with dad, who she's been estranged from, and then we jump one month later. So, yeah. so the length of this film is one month so far. Pulling a real, pulling a real battle star. They jump one month ahead. Amber goes walking in the woods. She sees a uh, a creature in the distance, and then nothing. Is it Bigfoot? It might have been a Bigfoot. <laughs> Amber doesn't know. I don't. I don't know Guru's shoe size. We might have to talk to. Uh, <laughs> Paul and Mike, uh, Michael, 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 Paul and yeah. Michael, uh, at the Dark Hollywood situation to see yeah, if they they're, know. They're, they're at a uh, convention in Long Beach next month. Wait, oh are yeah, we talking about the boys. Yeah. From, are we talking about the boys from Dark Hollywood? Whoa, yeah, your wow, voice sounds familiar. It's a almost a great impression of the announcer on that. That's interesting. I anyway, a lot. so so speaking of Chris Hudson, who looks like the dad in this film, uh, the dad tells a story about hurting his leg. I don't know. The elf helps him. A hooded figure helps him. He has no idea who. He says it was all out of focus. <laughs> well, just like the camera. Right. Maybe he was watching it through the camera. I, I don't. Okay, I don't want to get too far ahead of this, but okay, clearly we're living in a cyberpunk world, and I think what? the dad has. What? Like, <laughs> Oh, that's a whole thing for the end of the episode. Oh. But the dad clearly has cyber eyes, <laughs> and they just don't focus quite right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, so Can't that, wait hap- for that. that happened. Uh, <laughs> Amber goes out in the woods again, and she meets an elf. He says his name is Lithorian. Great name. It is a great name. <laughs> Gru is pretty good at naming his characters. <laughs> so so, so she asks what happened. She, he's like... He tries to, you know, he threatens her or whatever, and she says, yeah, oops, I'm fine. And then he explains, 
<laughs> what happened to his people? Because he's the last one. Wait, Mike. Wait, Mike. <laughs> yeah, can you wait, put in the clip? Here. Can you put in the clip where she says, "Oops, I'm fine." <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Error. Clip not found. No, I don't think that that was from. No. Yeah, that was from the movie. I just pulled it, it directly legit. from the film. Oh, yep. okay. Unexpected Race 2003. That wasn't was the good. remake, Paul. Yeah, it was Got really it. good. I, I just was for this part of the film when they meet for the first time. I I just found myself thinking like, what would this girl do if this actually happened? Like if you saw <laughs> someone in the woods dressed up like an elf, like what would you think? You would think like this is somebody dressed up like an elf. That's what you'd think. You wouldn't be like, oh, this is an elf. What? what? The co the cosplayers have moved to the forest. Right. You'd think it's a. You'd think that that would be where you'd go. You'd Jay, be like, surely this is a second. costume. Yeah, I don't know thank if you, Paul. You, Set him straight, Paul. I don't know if you watched the movie, but Lithorian explains very succinctly uh -huh. what <laughs> happened to his race, and he tells her a ten minute story. Oh, and yeah. And then after of course. that story is finished. She believes him completely and begins frolicking with him in the forest. <laughs> my name is Lithorian, and my people are elves. I don't believe this. Elves don't exist. They're mythical people in stories. Well, they do exist more than people knew. Until now, I'm the last. What happened? My people can live for a very long time. Through the ages we've kept to ourselves, until this age came, with all your technology and power, somehow your government found us. I was out gathering wood, and then I heard a gunshot. since then you know what pisses me off most about this movie is that this Lithorian is 2,000 years old and we're all gonna we're gonna take him at face value just as Amber does because why wouldn't you believe a crazy guy with pointy ears in the forest <laughs> for a guy who, who has lived 2,000 years he falls in love like that like what a horn dog he, well, well that's because he just wanders around in the woods all day by himself he'd yeah. fall for literally anybody walking you through know, the forest someone needs to tell this guy about fantasy conventions where he would fit in perfectly thank you no one would ever have a problem with him there so anyway also while I'm being cynical <laughs> is it too much to ask modern elves living in the 21st century to stop dressing like it's 14 fucking okay that's the other thing Chris thank you like if this race lives for thousands of years you would think they would be way more more technologically advanced than humans. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, they, like, freeze at, like, this, like, medieval level and never progress. Yeah. When society <laughs> is growing up literally everywhere around them. They should be at the forefront of technology and scientific thinking. It is 2003. Find yourself a black trench coat and a yeah. rose and get with the program. Yes. That's all you gotta do. I get it. Maybe a hat. Come on. Listen. That's all fine and dandy, but I just want to get back to the story that Amber 100% believes, as Paul says, <laughs> that he tells her, which is how his entire race of people died, which was because a, a team of FBI agents came into the woods and then just execution style killed everybody. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right. This is going to take some time to break down because that happened when... In the 60s. 1960s. In the 60s, yeah. Yeah. All right. A.D. So, A.D. Right, right, right. As in, <laughs> Thank you for like clarifying. 50 that is years important. ago. Yeah. So, if I am to understand this correctly, prior <laughs> to the 1960s, uh -huh. like when our parents were teens, maybe in their 20s, maybe in their 30s, depending on, you know, who you're talking to, elves were around. And yeah. Yeah were accepted and there were no pro they, they, the elves were able to live peacefully they kept to themselves but yeah. they were able to live among the humans without any sort of major issues probably like the amish i bet kind of like yeah, that yeah like hidden away i got the impression that people didn't know about them really uh 
But Paul, this also kind of brings me into the Tolkien-esque aspects of these elves that I've got a whole Uh-oh. essay written on comparing the great, uh, the, the unexpected race to the Lord of the Rings and the whole Middle Earth. I'm really glad you brought that up. We do have a link to that at the, in the post here, so you can ju- we'll put that post to that w- of your essay you've written about this. It's a link to the post. Don't worry. Anyone can Fantastic. read it. You don't have to go over it here, but the link is in the post. <laughs> Mike, you can link to mine, too, because I did one on Shadowrun Elves. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, we have a link to that as well. Say, I Jeff- can't wait. To, I'm glad for the listener yeah. to read both of your actual essays you've actually written, and there's a link to both of them in this post so you can all go to it. I, I can give you an elf fact right now if you want one. No, I'm just save it. It's cool. Are you sure? The normal gestation time for an elf is 360 days. They often give birth <laughs> to one child. However, twins are common as well. They're usually 5.2% of their mother's weight, and the suckling time is over 25 months. Well, that's a lot quicker gestation period than the vampires in modern vampires. That is true. I could go further, but I, I thought I'd keep it brief. I could talk more about Lord of the Rings if you want. <laughs> so anyway, Amber asks what like Thorian likes to do, and he says, I like to ride horseback. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get an eight-minute montage. Oh. Oh, it's brutal. We get an amazing oh, bulk-level fucking montage of two-plus songs in it. My, my, my son asked, why is this so long when we watched it together today? <laughs> oh, that's so sweet he, that you watched it with him. I had some little bonding time, but mostly I wanted to make him suffer. <clears throat> nice. Wow. Life is hard. Yeah. He needs to learn that. Sometimes you watch some shitty fantasy movies, kid. <laughs> yeah. So there's stuff. They they ride horseback. They have a feast. It, 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 it does nothing. Hey, can we talk about the feast for a moment? Sure. No. <laughs> I love the, I mean, this is the most succulent, mouth-watering feast I have ever seen in my entire life. Uh-huh. Eight courses. Eight full courses. Not around a dining table, but just everyone sitting on a log eating eight courses of goddamned apples. Delicious. <laughs> Macintosh. Delicious. Probably. Granny well, Smith. Red Delicious. Fuji. Yeah. Fuji. <laughs> oh, Galactic Crisp. Oh. That's a new one. That's great. Ooh, I mentioned hopefully they yeah. had that back Pink then. Pink Lady. Mm-hmm. So Amber finds her dad all mm-hmm. fucked up, uh, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what happened to her dad? Seriously. Beasting. Beasting. What, a beasting? Yeah, really? I thought allergic. somebody shot a... Oh, I didn't hear anything saying that. I thought someone, the FBI, shot a dart yeah, at him. Yeah, it takes a long time before they answer the question of what happened to him. It oh does look like a dart. I mean, he slaps his neck, and Gru, you know, Gru, if you could say anything about Gru, is he doesn't think his audience is stupid, you know? He makes he makes them <laughs> understand for themselves. Oh, I forgot. That's the universal sign for I've been stung by a bee. Yeah, classic. Could have put a little Slap, buzz in Slapping there. the back of your neck. <laughs> oh, God. Amber finds him and then has to go get Lythorian, pretty much. Yeah, but she Amber's frolicking in the woods with Lythorian for who knows however many it hours. It feels like it's months, but it's 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 because of the montages, because there is another montage in here where we do see more love chasing. Lithorian had to go get wood, <laughs> and then everyone dies because he went and got <laughs> sticks. But no, it's like a full like 20 minutes between the time Beasting and Amber finding her dad on the porch. It's a long time. Movie magic. Oh, movie magic. All right, all right. It's a little weird. And I love, okay. What? In this part, too... This part where Gru is sleeping on the ground. Yeah. Three lives. He has a he has a dream. <laughs> and his wife gives him permission to do sex with another woman. Uh-huh. Yeah. Living the dream. Yeah. So I just What, you've never had know. one of those, Jay? No, I just feel like that there's like uh, <laughs> never mind. I cut this out. <laughs> But, okay, so what the deal is this dream? Because this is clearly a fantasy because I was going to bring in some Unexpected Race 2 tidbits, but we find out in the post credit sequence that his wife is still alive. So how can she appear to him in a dream? Well, first of all, I don't even think we've mentioned that there are, what, two sequels to this? Yeah, there's two sequels. And, sort and apparently you guys fucking watched them? <laughs> no, they're just, they're pitch, they're pitch they're trailers. Pitch, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, really? They're that's like, it? Yeah, that's yeah, they're like five minutes each. Oh, okay. But they're about as long as that She-Hulk uh, movie he made, Paul. <laughs> Both of them combined are shorter than the fucking horse riding montage. Very true. That? Very true. Anyway. So, spoiler alert, his wife is still alive, yet appearing it to Lithorian in a dream without telling him that she's still alive. 
Well, rather, than, I mean, that's the ultimate selfless sacrifice. I'm in prison. Go sleep with this human lady. I mean, aren't they sort of taking some sort of uh, play out of the uh, Lord of the Rings playbook here? I would imagine. If you're referring to Lithorian trying to get one of the Samarls from the Iron Crown of Morgoth, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is what he was referring to. Stephen Colbert would be very proud, Chris. So so she finds her dad and knows her. So she's got to go find Lothorian because she knows that she's put together that he is the cloaked figure that helped her dad before when his dad got bloody for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> also, can I say in, in, in her father's delirium, I just got to say that in her father's delirium, he tells her it's not safe out at night. What is hiding in the woods? Well, elves, apparently. Oh, Lithorian who wants to bang her. That's yeah, what, that's well, what dad doesn't want. Fair enough. Creepy 2,000 year old banging your daughter. Come yeah, on. I mean, <laughs> stay out of the woods, dear. Keep it close to your age. So Lithorian <laughs> helps the dad, helps heal him. Uh, and so then Amber and Lithorian make out. And then oh, our yeah. resident Skinamax expert, Paul A. Brooks, what happens next? I have no idea. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean you don't have what? Uh, okay, so let me think here. They make a, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Now oh he my remembers. god, dude. Okay, why are they <laughs> yeah. making out in the kitchen? What? Oh wait, do you, is that a bad scene? Like in a Skinamax, would you see people making out in kitchens, or is that not? Is that a no-no? Okay, they're making out in the kitchen, and yes. uh, two. Weary travelers. Oh yeah, approach. baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I did their car. Their car didn't break down. I don't. Nope. No. I don't know why they're there. Hiking, I think. Camping, something. Yeah, <laughs> they're there. They need help with something. Yes. Well, I think they got lost. Maybe they got lost. They go up to uh, the house, and oh yeah. Yeah, here it comes. Oh yeah, here it is, baby. Say it, Paul. Just say it. Lithorian and. Uh, Amber are making out, and oh, yeah. she gently. This is this is a little bit of a my erotic fanfic for you here. She <laughs> gently brushes his hair back, exposing his <gasps> delicate elven ear. Ooh! And the people standing outside, watching the entire yeah. thing for the past minute and a half, yeah. Yeah. are absolutely. Oh, horrified. Oh yeah. Horrified. To see that this oh, so horrified. What we oh. thought was a human being has yeah. in fact an elven an elven ear. Oh, the taboo. It couldn't possibly be cosplayers or doing some oh. sort of kinky thing. It's no, got to be a real it elf. It's definitely <laughs> a real elf. Can you believe those cosplayers are their lips are touching? Oh. It's oh, okay, hor- Paul- it is a horrifying scene. Mmm, yeah. I'm going to puke all over my computer. <laughs> so the hikers run away, and like Gru pursues them for a second, and they get away, and they go to the sheriff. But yeah, he goes murderous on them, though, right? Like, he takes a knife and jumps onto their hood. Oh, that's true. Yeah. He is violent he's, he's towards gonna, them. He's going to kill these two innocent peeping tongs. But it's right. fine. They go to the sheriff, who is at a house. And <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Jack Black. No, that's in the no, remake, the Paul. That's the yeah. remake. Oh, so shit. This is okay, where Jack sorry. Black would be introduced in the film. So I haven't seen the remake, but it's Jack well, Black. Then, I, can, I can only assume... Then Hudson, they go you know to what? Him. I'm using the one! Wait, wait, no. You can't talk about something you haven't <laughs> seen, my boy. Well, no, no. No, this is... I've... It's, a, it's here when the sheriff... Calls the FBI, <laughs> and we finally figure out why the FBI hates the elves so bad. Exactly, Hard- Jay. Agent Hardman says humans are the better race. It's very racist. And it's good old-fashioned racism. Yes. Hardman's brother was killed by elves. I feel honored to follow in your footsteps, sir. But I wonder, what's the real reason we're doing this? What does the agency want with this race, especially in the 60s? Is there another agenda I don't know about, sir? Top secret. But I will say, for me, it's a personal vendetta. My brother was killed five years before I joined the agency by this race. 
Forrest, there's more to this manhunt than you know. But he will fall today, and I will be the one to do it. Uh. So the FBI show up at the house, right? And, like, they, they, they politely ask. No, they don't. They're assholes. But anyway, Amber runs to try to warn Lethoria. What's his name? Lethorian. Well, she's got to go to the bathroom first. It's, it's good to go to the bathroom before you go on a giant forest hike. Well, that's what she claimed. It was a, it was a, it was yeah. a ruse, Hudson. It was a ruse. Whoa! Oh, oh, wait shit. a minute. I, I thought she had to stop and take a leak. No, ah. we got to talk about this for a second. What do we got, Paul? What do you want to talk about? They, they, the FBI agents storm the house. I mean, they're in. You know, it's it's go time, right? Like they want yeah. to get this guy. And she says, "I need to go to the bathroom," and they say, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. What? They're yeah. polite. FBI's are polite. <laughs> and she turns as she's walking to the bathroom she turns around and gives them a look that clearly <laughs> says I am going to jump out the bathroom window <laughs> and they don't pick up on this at all and they are absolutely flabbergasted when she Ugh. runs away Paul these FBI agents are trained elf killers they're not looking at like white woman believing they're not trained in that sort of thing so oh. they believe everything she says she's got to go to the bathroom of course she does you were in army is that why all of the fbi agents have their guns like trained the entire time at everybody's crotch yes okay cool so jay after she jumps out the window and the fbi realize what happens uh mm -hmm. this is this is uh a quiz question for you yeah what happens next Oh, this is wonderful. So she runs and tells Lothlorien, and he ends up using primitive traps to battle the FBI. Like, they're running around, and he somehow manages to hit them with swinging logs. So he got the fucking Ewoks to set up a bunch of traps. It's Pretty much. E e yeah. E it's e e Ewoks. <laughs> Pretty great. Or, or, Jay, as I have in my notes here, Amber runes away to warn Lytherian, Rambo shit! <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah, there's a fight in the woods between Lytherian and, and who, who thinks he's Rambo Some now. serious elf MMA going on. He's, like, making yeah. them shoot each other, stabbing them. Oh, yeah. Oh, and he challenges wait a minute. the guy to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Can, can I make a comment about that bullshit where... The, F, the two FBI agents <laughs> shoot each other. Wait, Paul, Paul, wait, hold on. Yes, you can, but let me help crack open a quick another can of Night Beast Hard Seltzer. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. nice. Oh, uh, refreshing. All right, please, Paul, what, what? Um, so, Lytherian is stuck in the middle between two FBI agents who are about to shoot him. And apparently, the... Uh, FBI does not train their agents to stand directly in front of each other when shooting a suspect that they are trying to apprehend. Chris, I don't know if you have anything to say uh, about this in terms of army training once again, but to me this I seems do. like maybe a bad idea. I have a lot to say about this. Oh, keep it short. <laughs> All right, I will keep it as short as I can. Wand. That whole thing, um, stupid. <laughs> yeah, that's how you yeah. avoid the wand. <laughs> I'm sure Gru thought it was so badass. So clever. He ducked out of the way. He yeah. ducks out of the way and the FBI agents shoot each other accidentally because it was Ugh. crossfire. That's what I like to do. That's what I like to do at the mall food court. I go to like two different food court stands and I order from both places. And then as they're about to give me the food, I move out of the way. And oh. the food court people give food to each other. <laughs> what? It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Where did that come from? What? I'm glad I didn't want you, I guess, because that was <laughs> that was mystical. Uh, just like how Gru doesn't duck out of the way of a bullet and then gets shot and falls into the river. Chris, that's one of the strangest things I've ever heard you yeah, say. Yeah, like, right, okay, let's go back to that. Hudson, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, you know, you're at the mall food court. You've got a lot of different 30 years ago, places guys. to choose from. 30 years ago, things Malls were a lot different in mall food, food courts. courts. We okay? had to get our food under a log out in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. So, like, Thorian's fine, guys. He didn't die in the river. He's okay. He's but right. he, says, yeah. he says he's got to leave. And, Jay, does he stay or does he go? 
He, like a true Western hero, he goes. He (laughs) decides not to be with Amber, which is so weird. Yeah. But, I mean, he that's that's his pick. He he doesn't want to walk with her, and pretty much just we cut to a funeral 62 years later. No, no, no. Well, before that, we even get another one month later thing. Lathorian's hiding out in the woods after getting shot for another month before he even thinks about going to talk to Amber. Yeah, what is this bullshit? What is he doing for... Okay, he's hiding out. He faked his own death. (laughs) But then, okay, fine. Paul, you want to know what he's doing? He's wandering around the woods, talking to himself in his own head, having montage (laughs) flashbacks for a month. Yeah, exactly. But here's my problem. He finally... Comes back, Amber's like sitting in the woods for no reason, and <laughs> he just walks up. Did you think I was that easy to kill? You're alive? Of course I am. What happened? I faked my death. I got shot and fell into the river. I'm so happy. I've been waiting for this moment to tell you. I must go. What? I must move on. They cannot find me. I am the last. Okay, oh, that, that was, was cool. That was a great soundbite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the best. He, he tells her that he has to go because he, he faked his own death and he doesn't want to get caught by the FBI. Fine. Perfectly reasonable. But kiss the fucking girl before you oh. leave forever. Like, if you mm-hmm. want to be an, a Western action hero, dip her down, give her a passionate kiss before you walk off into the sunset. You know what I mean? A sunset yeah. smooch is usually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, it's more important because sunsets, the sun goes down to the west, he, you kiss the girl, you walk off to the west, Tolkien's elves sail into the west yes. when they, they're tired of their lives in Middle Earth, and they go to sail to the shores of Valinor. Exactly. They, they should have been playing forever uh, the... With their, uh, Annie Lennox song Into the West right here. Yes. Yeah. Side then, note, exactly. Mike, the uh-huh. first time after I watched this movie, I was God. so <laughs> upset. I'm not joking. I immediately went and listened to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack to watch this movie <laughs> out of my mind. Okay, so Jay, you spoiled it. We go to Amber's funeral next. 62 years yes, later. Amber's dead. But guess what? The Chris Hudson looking dad is still alive. This, I thought, was an actually good twist. I, I was so confused for a second. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, me yeah. too. Very My confusing. notes are just like, what the fuck? Dad's still alive? What the hell's all this shit? Oh, oh, you were confused about the dad. I was confused about everyone else at the funeral. Who were those people? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Gru looked a little like uh, Dave Mustang there. Don't you oh, think? yeah. <laughs> With his black trench coat. Well, wait, what do you mean by that, Jay? What does he look like? He's, you know, he looks, he got like long... It's, it looks like... Just watch the movie. You'll see it. <laughs> I'm not going to describe what he looks like. He's got a black trench coat. It looks like he belongs to like some sort of like late 80s thrash metal band. Yeah. yeah. Holding a single rose. <laughs> so so Dad's still alive. The preacher's really bored about what he's saying. And then uh, like Thorian shows up in the distance, leans against the tree like a real cool motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> and then explains... Uh, Jay, well, you know, Jay, what 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 is Lithorian explained to the dad? Well, since the dad was injured and Lithorian helped him once by, upon by Jay, a time. Jay, when you say injured, you mean like got stung by a bee, right? <laughs> I mean like bear trap, like something gnawed his leg. <laughs> oh, that and part. Lothar, the hill people, tried to help him or oh, heal wait. him. Oh, really? wait. I didn't think about him. that. What? Yeah. I thought, well, I thought... He helped him. I thought when he talks about the helping thing, which Jay, you are going to be the one who says what happens because uh-huh. we're not let. We are the one to say it. Okay. But I think we all, the rest of us, thought he was talking about when he healed him from the beast thing. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I no, no, no. It was uh, at least that's not what I took. I no. took it as because he helped him prior to Amber even entering the story. Because when he was the dad was yeah, saying yeah. there's something in the woods, he, he's helped he got him twice his, at least. his leg. Yeah, he's got been healed twice. His leg was mauled by something and Lothar helped him and then healed him and I thought that was the part where from that point on Wait, so you're be... saying that when he got stung by the bee he didn't have to use his life force to help him that Whoa! time? Well, he probably did. He probably did. 
He's gotten a double dose of Elven. It is like an extra 30 years for each injury. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> now it's all coming. Guys, this is what we talk about this Ooh. shit. We learn about fucking epiphanies, man. My, oh my God, minds guys. together. Speaking of epiphanies, uh -oh. this is a lot like the series six episode, Let's Kill Hitler of Doctor Who, oh, where River no. Song uses some of... Hey, Chris, to answer your question, all those people who we don't recognize, well, obviously it's 62 years later, so it's like Amber's daughter and family members and friends and stuff like that. Okay, so you're telling me her daughter, 62 years later, was 15. Well, she found love <laughs> late in life. Who knows when people life. fuck? Oh, yeah, come on, dude. <laughs> Fine. You know what I liked? That there is there is an unexplained question. An unexpected question. Here. An, unex <laughs> an unexpected question. Because at the funeral, 62 years later, when the father puts his daughter into the ground and he spies Lithorian all in his black trench coat, his cool cyberpunk getup, he calls him old friend when they, when they greet. Yeah. And at that point, I'm like, well, you've met the dude like twice for a grand total of 10 minutes. But oh no, in unexpected races two and three. Okay, they okay, join I need, forces God damn it. to fight no, the gravel, evil gravel. villainy. I mean, Mike, you can just go to rating. We did the whole thing. Hell yeah. <laughs> rating time. All right, guys, so we've had, uh, we've had a wild ride through this. <laughs> And I've, I've enjoyed this discussion a lot, but now it's time to talk about and hear about how, we, how much we all enjoyed the actual film. Hey, Mike, I've had a great time discussing it as well, but part of that might be because of these three Night Beast Hard Seltzers. <laughs> Those sound really delicious, Paul. <laughs> all right, guys, let's, let's rate this one out of 100 unexpected FBI massacres. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, uh, shit. Well, Hudson, since you're so enthusiastic, let's hear yours first. Uh, so, so as a Tolkien scholar, uh, this the Unexpected Race has a lot of parallels with the story of Baron and Luthien from uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, uh, The Silmarillion. Except in this story, the sexes are reversed. Uh, oh. Gru would play the role wait, wait, of Luthien. Hudson, you already did day, this bit. You already did this and, bit. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, 40 unexpected FBI messages. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had. Hey. That was one of the, yeah. Hey, it's, it was great, buddy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Paul, go for it. Mike, you've put me in a very tough situation here because as we discussed on our review of uh, the documentary, The Insufferable Gru, it is hard to separate the art from the artist. And so I don't... <sighs> this movie is up my alley, you know? Like, mm -hmm. this is the sort of stuff that I typically really enjoy. But having seen the documentary, uh, it knocked it down a little bit for, for me. For... Well, Paul, keep it, you got to keep it separate, buddy. We talked about I it. I can't do that. No, you're. I mean, can you keep Woody Allen... Separate from all the yeah. shit that yeah. he's pulled, or Michael exactly. Jackson, absolutely Paul, it's, not. It's like how Paul. It's like how everybody clearly loves Limp Biscuit, right? <laughs> but then you Just get to like know that. what kind of a guy Fred Durst is, and you're like, I don't know if I like Limp Biscuit as much anymore. It's yeah. like it, it soils it. <laughs> you know what, Jay? I would much rather hang out with Fred Durst than Stephen Grew. So, <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, um, that's saying something. So, so wow. unfortunately. Unfortunately, I'm just going to have to go kind of right down the middle, which is the most kind of the worst thing you could do really on B-Movie Mania. I'm going to go 47 FBI uh, une unexpected <laughs> FBI massacres that should have never happened in the first place. I agree. You don't have to put in that last part in the graphic, though. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Jason Hulse. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm going to echo a little bit of what Paul is saying there. Um, there's a real Breen-like narcissism going on here with Stephen <laughs> Grew. Big time. That when you learn about it is a big turnoff, and it's like you can't unsee it. And I actually watched the documentary before... Did I watch it before the no. actual movie? 
I don't, Why would you do I don't that? Think you did, I did, Jay. No. You did. You told me did to watch I? the documentary first. Yeah. It's, That's the it's, wrong order. No, I don't think so. I don't think it is the wrong order. I don't think there is so the right the or wrong, wrong order, order to this. <laughs> because I, I felt like I knew more of what I was getting into going into the movie, which mm-hmm. I appreciated. Um, so, yeah, I just I don't know that there's very little technical craft going on. Like I said, I feel like he likes having made movies because he's made 200 of them. But wow. I, it's just like he doesn't like spending the time to get better, but he expects to be treated... Uh, this is all documentary talk. <laughs> 40. <laughs> Did you say 40? 40. Yeah. Wow. It's about right. Is it? Uh, that's what I expected from well, Jay. Like yeah. it. We're going to pass it over to you, Mike. What do you think? This film, guys. This is... <laughs> this is why... I think movies are made. <laughs> oh my god. You better be careful. We're going to be banging our own elven wands on your balls. Well, yeah. listen. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh god. All right, listen. Listen. Here here's what I have to say. The, the, we have the doc talk. You, everyone heard it before. Uh yeah, someone's got their priorities fucked up, but uh you know no. the earnestness of this fucking movie is so fucking intense. It is so much a passion project. It is... This is what people should be watching instead of garbage like The Room. Oh my god. Like... Oh my god. Like, like The Room is so... We don't have to get into that. That's that's a different thing. No, we're getting into it. That's a different thing. What? How is this what? any different from the room in terms of the level of yeah. shittiness of the director? That's what I'm saying. Like people, instead of the room, people should be watching something like this. This Ugh. is where, because this didn't have a million dollars, whatever the fuck Wiseau spent on six that. million. God damn. <laughs> and and the thing is, it has such a broader scope. It has such a a, a passion. Such such so much desire to be a film and it also is the same thing as like me and my friends in high school just doing a thing on our camcorder <laughs> so like right like they're tearing me apart <laughs> there is for me personally i think i mean it's a garbage film <laughs> but but it is Personally, in that way of watching a bad movie where you want to enjoy it for what the fuck is happening and that kind of writing kind of stuff, like similar to The Room. Like The Room, has no- nothing happens in The Room. It's very unenjoyable. Um, <laughs> Folks, so- he likes to do this because, you know, it's a popular opinion that The Room no, is a cult No, this is not film. contrarian, Paul. This is not contrarian. I'm saying I just prefer stuff that's got more of a theme or something to it. And this went for a thing where, as someone pointed out, there's no fucking elf houses. What the fuck is happening with these elves? Like, I love it. It's great. <laughs> and so I think this is a film that if someone likes something like The Room, because The Room is a hard watch for someone who isn't into that kind of stuff, who isn't into a bad movies, I think this is on par easily with that kind of a movie. 90 Unexpected Massacre. Oh, FBI my massacres. God. Oh, Absolutely. Me. 90. Mike, Mike, you really are tearing me apart. Yeah, I don't know what you're smoking. I'm smoking that Elvin Kush. <laughs> <laughs> On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Well, guys, I couldn't help but notice that this next episode will be our 13th of the season. Uh Uh-oh. So, to celebrate episode 13, (laughs) we are going to get abducted into the world of David Dekatu. Oh, Oh, no. It's going to be 1313 Big Island. 1313 UFO Invasion. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Oh, Yeah. I hope there's a shirtless boy cleaning a pool in this one. Oh, Oh, you have no idea. Pool of DNA. I can't watch this one without my kids. (laughs) Get ready for the pain. 
Oh my god. Where can we watch this, Paul? You can watch it on Amazon Prime. Oh, good, because they took Bigfoot Island down. I know, uh, so and Mike honestly edit this out because I don't want to bring anybody down, but like the original plan was to watch Bigfoot Island b- since oh. Kristen. It, di- it <laughs> fucking disappeared. Oh, man. I'm I so, was yeah, so yeah. pissed off. <laughs> Our fans are crying if you left that in. You know what might make the fans happy, though? What? Maybe they bought a t-shirt. We have so many t-shirts now. Hey, you know what might make them even more happier? What? Uh, uh, Fall's coming up. They need to buy some B-Movie Mania sweatpants. Oh, Oh, we got some dope sweatpants on there. Is wait, is this the one? Is this the one with a giant B on the dick spot? (laughs) No. That's not. just yours, Chris. We oh, just got mine. that for you. Thank you. The, 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 Thank the, you. To, to verbally describe it, it is down one of the legs. It is the uh, basically oh. the intro, part of the intro that Uncle Lloydie, Mr. Lloyd yeah. Kaufman, uh, says mm. uh, during our intro here. And it's it's fantastic. They look really great. They're just some words down the leg. They're very comfy. Holy shit, they're comfy and warm. They're great. Great for fall. I just took mine off a few minutes ago. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ready for the David Decatu? De- however you fucking say his name. David Decatu? I'm getting ready for the UFO island or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah. we've got some great shirts. We've got a lot of weird shit on there. We've just decided this is a new bit, so we're just making shirts out the ass. So come <laughs> get them uh, at store.bmoviemania.com. Follow us on social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're doing a lot of fun stuff, uh, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff even, or, or cut for time and all that kind of fun stuff. So check us out. on B- Paul, is that the Shredder still? What are you shredding now? Uh, oh, that was my birth certificate. Oh, no. Are you unborn was, now? Wait, <laughs> it was an accident. Wait, was that the long form or the, just the one they It was the out. short form, remember. so it shouldn't matter. It just said birth yeah, certificate. Yeah, that won't matter. Okay. That won't matter. Paul asked right. Brooks. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you, everyone, for listening. Please check more out. Uh, Jay, I heard you have more elf facts. Is that right? Yes, I do. I do have more elf facts. Fantastic, Paul. Can you play him out while Jay reads these new, these rest of these elf facts? I well, I, I don't. What do you mean, play him? Adult out? Adult elves are on the average slightly taller than humans, and they are usually somewhat you mean on more the shredder? lightly built. But equally I'm out strong. of paper. Their most remarkable characteristic are their pointed ears. Their I'm skin color recording. varies similarly as the humans from white to black. Body hair is sparse, but head hair is full. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! So we all know them. Knife eared freak, dandelion eater, daisy eater, tree hugger, or keeb, which is short for keebler. Those are all insults to elves. So don't say those words to elves. They really don't like it. If you're a keeb, you can call another elf a keeb. But don't just say keeb if you're not a keeb. <laughs>